For someone who barely escaped with their life in one escape pod, I've done pretty well for myself. I've flourished. I even got started on building my own ship home, but I did actually manage to accomplish our mission. We all came out here because of a derelict ship that we spotted. And I found it. The Volander. This is an old ship, but it's in really good working order. The problem, of course, is that this ship is not new. <laughs> there have been a lot of advances since the Volander was created, and in fact, the species that created it, who I presume are called the Volander, were apparently robots because they didn't put any oxygen stuff on their ship in the slightest. In addition, they don't have any programming blocks, any timer blocks, any LCD screens, any more advanced features like that. They don't have any, uh, any of the more advanced features like beds that we might like. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's time to retrofit this huge ship. I don't know how many videos this is going to be or how exciting it's going to be. I don't even know whether we're going to edit them or not. But I have gone ahead and tweaked my uh, survival mode settings just a touch to make it a little bit less obnoxious. I've increased the speed at which things are ground, and I've increased inventory a little bit. I didn't do that when I was getting my start, I just did it now because we're going to be having a big retrofit. So the first thing we need to do is connect our base to the Volander. The Volander can move, even though it's 20 times the size of our base, so the Volander is what we're going to be focusing on. This little prong, I've cut it out through the side of the ship. This is what we're going to connect. Shall we go ahead and do that? This top tower, the conning tower, is what we're probably going to be focusing on today. Because we need to make it into uh, a more suitable set of... of uh, a more suitably... Uh, we gotta have, like, oxygen and shit in here. LCD screens, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and pick this guy, because he's a little bit closer. So, let's try and bring this into alignment. Got it. Alright, so now the Volander should automatically start to use its impressive uh, a number of uh, refineries and assemblers to help kickstart my base. I was previously uh, just grinding along slowly, 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 but now it should go quite a bit faster. And moreover, now that it's connected, I can start to pool the resources and use the Volander, or retrofit the Volander, so that I can use it. Let's go ahead and show you the difference between the Volander's bridge, which you just saw, and a modern bridge. A modern bridge, which you can find over here, has a lot of differences from the Volander's bridge. You may have noticed that the Volander's bridge opens up into windows. A modern bridge does not open up into windows. I have windows around it, but a modern bridge opens up into computer screens so that you can see everything that's going on. Moreover, a modern bridge even has a camera so that you can see the same computer screens from anywhere. Obviously, the Volander's Bridge can't fit this. Not only are there windows in the way, but it's not tall enough. It's only one tile tall. So what we have to do with the Volander... ...is rip out the bridge and put in a different bridge. But I do like the conning tower as it looks. This conning tower looks fine. The problem is that the... Sorry, excuse me. The problem is that this downstairs area needs to be merged into this upstairs area. So we have to rip this floor out. It's a lot more work than it sounds, because this floor is made out of heavy armor rather than normal armor. Uh, now the reason for that is because the robots that built this figured that people would try and invade through doors and enter into this killing zone, so the killing zone is actually plated in heavy armor. Um, and, you know, you come in through these three doors and you get attacked by the turret and you can't blast your way up and all that stuff. Uh, that's not how people ended up attacking, and I think this is probably why the Volanders are now extinct. Um, normally speaking, you'll just come in through the windows, and, uh, you know, this heavy armor floor does nothing but add weight. Still, we have to get rid of it, and the best way to do that is to bring in a grinding ship. 
So we have a lot of options as to how we want to attack this, but I think that the easiest way to do it would be to come in from the front and just go under the windows. We'll leave the windows intact, at least for now. We have to wire this whole ship up for oxygen, and that means that we need more space than that one tile height. So in addition to needing more than a tile of height for the computers, we need more than a tile of height for the oxygen, because we have to pipe it in. So as you can see, once we've combined the kill area and the actual conning tower itself, we're able to create a large enough space to wire everything together. We can have good LCD screens, and have plenty of room to run conduits if we need to run conduits. We'll have some nice space to put, like, beds or whatever if we'd like to. Uh, so basically, this space is large enough for our needs, but we have to get rid of this killing zone. We have to, we have to stop the uh, wasted space from below. Alright, so here you can see we're actually starting to expose space, so we'll stop there, and we'll do the same on the other side. Come on, seat. Right away. There we are. Now for the ledge. Both sides have a ledge that needs to be ground away, as you can see. And then we'll have a flat, straight line straight up from the base. Of course, some of that will still be heavy armor. We'll have to decide whether we want to leave that heavy armor in place or uh, scrap it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing now. Let's back all the way out for the moment. Ooh, or crash into something, that's okay. Oh, or keep crashing into something, that's okay. I like crashing into things, it's healthy. All right. So previously, we would have had to go in, walk all the way to the end, then walk up ramps, and up ramps, and up ramps, and up ramps, and into this tiny little area where we would have had one tile of height. Now, we can get here, uh, well, we can come in through the same door if we'd like, but we're going to have to have a different entrance, I think. But we're going to be able to sit here, and have a much bigger view. So where do we want to put the, the seat? Probably here. And we probably want to turn that door into a wall of panels. So if we think about that, we've got this indent that's definitely in the wrong spot, so let's get rid of this. Now I don't have a lot of glass to throw around, so I'm going to end up filling in a lot of this stuff with um, steel, even though it would look better as glass. Uh, I don't have an infinite amount of silicon, although I do have some, and it is being uh, worked on as we speak, I think. Shall we check? Let's check. Yeah, some of these arc furnaces are absorbing stuff, so I think that all of the ore that I have is probably spoken for at this point, because there are a lot of, this, of, of uh, refineries and arc furnaces on this ship. Alright, so we don't need to come straight down here, because we want this window to actually serve as a, a front edge, so we want the front edge to be here. For now, we'll fill in the gap like this. Alright, so now we've got this zone here. Do we want this curve to still be here? It's not a bad curve, really. Uh, and we can fill it in like this. See? I think it's important when you retrofit ships to try and stay with some kind of uh, feel like the original had, even if you have to get rid of some of the s systems and components. So if you look at this, we have a wall that's got some staggered appeal to it, 
So one of the things we're going to want to do is very clearly have some readouts. And I think that we're just going to have to sacrifice this forward door. We don't really have any other options. A grinding down doors is about as fun as a punch in the face, but we'll get started. Oh, it's a lot easier when we own them. There we are. So, from the outside, we can make this look like anything we want. We can do anything we want here, but it's not going to be an entrance. It's going to be something else. To remind us that we want it to be something, let's go ahead and color this block bright red. From the outside, we'll be able to see that bright red, and we'll say, wait, that, that spot should be something. From the inside, what that spot should be is this, LCDs. So when we talk about LCDs, uh, we need to create them, but in order to create them, what we need is uh, computers and assembly components. That was a bit of a walk, so maybe we'll have to speed that up. I mean, we'll have to figure out a better way to do that. I already have some construction components, but I don't have very many computers. Since this base is tied all together, with no, with no gaps, we can just go ahead and pull computers in from wherever we can see them. Uh, but it looks like we don't have that many computers just in general. Um, we'll go ahead and take some construction components too. So we may have to uh, we may have to work on some computers as well, like print them up or something. Well, while we're down here, we might as well do that. Let's make Assembler 17 responsible for printing computers. Now you also need displays for these, but funny little fact, you don't actually need the displays. They work fine with no displays in them. How odd. There we go. That is going to be our primary display. So these entrances are probably going to be emergency exits and emergency entrances. We're probably going to want to replace those with something a little bit different. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do that now? So we have several kinds of doors that are more advanced than this pathetic little thing. Let's go ahead and pick one. Hmm. That one works fine. This one needs to be turned upside down. There we go. And that makes it a little bit more clear that those are emergency exits. Now that our emergency exits are intact, we'll put in our flight seat. I think that this is the right location. It might be one tile too close. So this is our view from the new flight seat. We're going to be able to put more stuff off to the sides if we'd like, and maybe replace this area with glass. A whole bunch of neat options. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to set these up to use M Master's LCD mod. To do that, we actually need to install some more blocks, because it has a prerequisite. We need to have a timer block to refresh the screens, and we need to have a programmable block, a programmable block to actually do all the work. Now, we just go ahead and pull up the AI core. This is just a reskin of the programmable block, uh, so we don't have to worry too much about that. And the timer block, which is just the default timer block. Well, whatever. Why do you need large steel tubes? This looks so cool. The intermediary. The, whoever did this is, is really nice. They put together a really nice model here. So we need two large steel tubes for some mysterious reason. Alright, so. Hello, Hal. How you doing? This is actually really powerful, and in the long run, I'm probably going to be using a lot of code to make this ship run nicer and be cooler. But for right now, we're going to use some stock 
code from MMaster. Uh, this is fantastic, and uh, you should go get it and use it. Don't be intimidated. You don't have to read through it, although it's not a bad thing to read through. There's a lot of things you can learn here. So, we're just going to remember an exit. That code controls all of the LCD panels, but the LCD panels haven't been updated yet because it hasn't been called yet. We could call it manually, but it's easier to set up the timer to call it. So to set up a timer to call it, we need to have the timer actually call it, like this. Bonk. Ha! That was so easy! But that would only call it once. We actually need to set up the timer to call itself. And that would be... Oop, no. There we go. Start. Now we're going to go ahead and start it, and you can see that it's triggering. You can also see it's triggering because of the flashy bits. See? Nice, huh? And over here, we can now set up these LCD screens. How do you set up an LCD screen? Well, we hit K, and we have to change the name to LCD in brackets. You can have anything you want before it, but this is how you have it end. And then you can just tell it what you want to do. There's a big list of commands you can use. Let's start with the simple one, like power. Oh, look! It's telling us what our power is like. Lovely. How about down here? Oxygen. Come on. There you go, oxygen. The cockpit vent on the other ship is not pressurized, because the glass window it doesn't exist yet. So this is how you make your LCD screens work great. So um, let's start by naming it LCD. And how about we get ourselves a list of uh, ores. Inventory of everything ore. See, it gives us a list of all of the ores. But you know there's a better setup than that. How about ingot? Oh, look, we can get a list of all of our ingots and how much ore is attached to them. See? That's pretty nice, right? But it goes off the bottom of the screen. That's okay. Let's hook the screen up to the one beneath it. There you go. Now it will display both above and below, like so. Now isn't that just lovely? So what are we going to put in the middle? So this gives us a list of everything, but obviously we don't need a list of everything. Uh, we've already got ingots over there, so we might as well just make it of components. wait for a second for it to catch up with itself. And you can see that it is giving us a list of components and how many components it thinks we should... Excuse me. How many components it thinks we should have. So, for example, it says, oh, well, I really think you ought to have 200,000 steel plates, but you only need to have 350 displays. And you only need to have 50 graph gens. So these bars, we can just take a look and say, okay, well, the ones that are low, we should probably work on because um, the defaults are correct. And now Volander has a cockpit that's substantially better than it had when we just started a little but a little while ago. Of course, it's not the Volander's fault. They couldn't have ever suspected that we would come along and figure out how to use computer screens. That would have been a ridiculous innovation. I've just finished retrofitting the space of the bridge, and I've just finished putting on the LCD screens. Alright, so this needs to just be a straight-up block. It wants to be blue. Let's make it blue. Sounds good. We can make them into windows later if we get the resources we need to do that. There we go. Now these windows look a little bit odd, 
but I think that that gives it a little bit of interesting shape. Let's go ahead and repeat the process for the other side. Alright, so now the front end is actually sealed off while well, the doors are open, but everything here, this bulwark, is all solid. We don't actually have an airtight seal, because these are not airtight. These ramps, which go down into the primary floor here, are not sealed in the slightest. And even if we were to close all the doors, they're still not sealed because of all of these ramps. So ramps are the worst enemy of people who are trying to create oxygen seals. Let's go ahead and, for now, just cut these ramps apart. It might be best to seal it off with just one brick. And we'll color the brick red so that we know that we need to come back to it. And that should create us a seal on that end. Let's go not die. Oh, that's what I wanted to put in the middle, the working. Of course. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, once I get out of the seat. Alright, now to do the same thing on this side. But, you know, I would like to be able to get down there because this area actually has all of the access to the uh, lower region that I need in order to be able to do work. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to end up bringing that stuff up. Uh, we have to, because otherwise we won't be able to put oxygen upstairs. But until we do, we would like to uh, be able to get down here for resources. But, in order for that to be the case, let's go ahead and just drill straight up here. Like so. Yuck. Perfect. We could even do it from over there. Um, except that's not within the cockpit, so this is actually the best solution. Let's go ahead and grind away this door. We don't need it. That. Let's make this a spinning block. Let's make this uh, yellow so that we know we might need to come back to it later. Oh, we can't make it this. Let's actually use an unusual shape here. We're going to be using the new partial armor block here. These are valuable because they can have a door attached to them without being awkward. So let's go ahead and add a door. Now that I think about it, I've never actually tested to see whether or not that counts as um, barricade, barricade. So let's put in another kind of door that I know will work regardless. Now the reason that this door is a little bit better is because this door actually can be set flush with the surface. Right, bulletproof glass. Now I think that this is going to be a temporary measure, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Alright, now this place should be sealable. But there's no way to pump oxygen into it yet because I haven't set that up. So in the next episode, we will be using these gaps down here to bring up some conduits and some oxygen. But that will have to wait. Because um, i got stuff to do, man. <laughs>